peace peace family so I'm back with another one today what I wanted to do is I wanted to talk to my chosen ones about how they thought you were sweet they thought you was an easy lick they thought you was gonna be an easy play until they got too close and they found out otherwise you know what I mean a lot of these beings that operate with this mindset with this playbook they honestly truly believe that the playbook that they follow is much more stronger and more powerful than sources playbook they've been indoctrinated with so much witchery and sorcery that they get in nice and honesty mixed up they're getting genuine caring and manipulation mixed up and I'm saying mixed up just being nice in all actuality I believe that they do have an understanding and they know and this is why they do so much project no so much projecting why they have such a, a, a fair base thought process and belief system you know but they thought things were sweet see people think when we do things that's uh, I hate using the word nice But I'm just going to use it When we make nice gestures They assume that We have no backbone They assume that Oh he's being nice That you know that means that He's a pushover or You can walk over top of him See For some reason They got this concept that you're supposed to be as hard as nails, as hard as a rock. You know, you aren't supposed to have any real emotions that's not negative or low vibrating. Because of the way they operate and because of the way society is set up, you have to put extra emphasis or just a little bit more emphasis on your walk of life based on their reactions and their responses. Now, people reaction and responses shouldn't dictate the way you live your life. What I'm saying is when I do nice gestures for people, you know, say somebody called me and they needed a ride, you know, it's like 1 a.m., 2 a.m. And they was kind of in my bubble, in my, my close space. So it was some, it's something that I would process and possibly actually do. When you go out your way and when I go out my way to do things like this, they feel as though they're always going to be able to do it. They don't realize that I have a red button that says no. I have a red button that says I will not. I have a red button that I can put a halt on showing so much empathy and sympathy towards a being when they're in those kind of spaces see society got us operating ah let me rephrase that society has a lot of beings out here operating backwards we've been fighting this battle for a while so we do a pretty good job at not moving backwards you know when I when I hear people that's connected with source talk it doesn't sound like somebody put their words in reverse you know I can actually hear them I can actually feel them I can actually take things to start to correlate it to where it could be helpful and beneficial to me in my life because I learn from all beings all beings from the youngest ones to the oldest ones from the most demonic ones to the most godly ones see even when you in those demonic vibrations once you've been doing it for a while and your, your frequency is like to infinity beyond, you acknowledge their actions and reactions, but you also are able to take the time to see what you could have done differently. I've never been one of those beings who like to lose, right? But if I do, I take it as a learning lesson. But I make sure, because I'm taking it as a learning lesson, that I don't make the same mistakes when I go take that test, when I go play that game, when I come across those obstacles, I make sure that I'm not 
doing and responding the same way. Like, I cannot expect the A on a test, but I keep forgetting to put my name on the top of the paper and then the teacher is deducting grades because I didn't put my name on the paper. You know, it's a silly reason to not get a good grade when you could just go ahead and knock these little things out the way. Maybe I should start putting my name on the paper first instead of getting straight to the problems and trying to solve them, you know? I have to take my time. I have to be a little bit more patient. But the way this system operates, man, when you are being generous and doing nice gestures, for one, you should be doing them because you want to, not because you're looking for something in return, which most of us, when we do them, we don't look for anything physical in return. We just look for that, that vibration to be, uh, it doesn't have to be reciprocated back all the time, but when you're in certain situations, you are looking for that vibration to kind of come back around to you in some kind of form or matter that's not negative and that's not harmful to your being. But a lot of these beings feel as though when we do these nice gestures, say you hold the door open for somebody, you know what I mean? Like you was just walking in the store and you just decided to, oh, you seen somebody a couple feet away? In your world, you feel like it's rude to just let the door close when somebody's walking by, even if you don't know them. So you stop for a second and you hold the door for them or you just stand out the way and pull the door and let them go first. Whatever your method or tactic is, because I'm pretty sure we, we all interchange them depending on how close that other being is to getting up to the door with us, you know? But when you have those beings who just walk right in the door without saying, thank you, I appreciate it, just some kind of acknowledgement, you know, it makes you want to respond. It makes you want to give a reaction. You know, whether it's, oh, I was just doing this for me, or, oh, damn, they rude as hell. Like, when I engage with beings who do those things, I acknowledge them. I say, you're welcome. I basically end it for them. You know, I don't have to say, oh, get back out the door. I'm going to reclose this, and then you got to rewalk back through. I don't pull them by their shirts out the door and then close the door and then make them do it. Nah. I make sure my signature vibration behind the word that I choose to use or the words that I choose to use I make sure that they can feel it you know you're welcome usually if somebody had ever walked past me from a nice gesture like that just me being courtesy courteous because that's just how I am naturally I will hit them with the you're welcome and I will make sure that I harden my energy a little bit more when I do say it you know you're welcome you can use that entitlement in all the other parts of this Western society. But when you run into this vibration, you're gonna be aware of your actions and what you're doing. Uh, like, there's always a learned lesson somewhere throughout the day. And sometimes you're that checkpoint. If you're in a society with a bunch of people who are not honest, who are afraid to speak up, talk out, you know, who are always holding back, you know, when they come across you, it's gonna strike them. It's kinda like when guys used to get a fresh haircut when you was younger back in the day and you go around your friends in school or in the neighborhood and you got your Caesar cut too low, what's the first thing they used to do? Ah, slap the back of that head. Physically, you know? You ain't hitting people physically with the situations we talking about right now, but spiritually, we do these things see when you've been in this realm and you start to understand what's actually happening out here you be putting them spiritual hands on people a lot of people don't really realize that they be doing this but you are actually putting them spiritual hands on people i don't mean like you you imagine like what i'm saying spiritual hands meaning that you are creating a response that doesn't have to do with you doing anything physically it's kind of like if I say if I tell my daughter hey could you grab me that cup over there I just use my words I didn't get up and push her over there pull her back by a collar or a leash and then you know now she grabbed it no I just use my words our inner space projected outwardly 
these are some things that you gotta keep in mind because they want us to be selfless. I meant selfish in a selfless space. I'm gonna say that one more time. They want us to be selfish while we're trying to maintain selflessness. You know, if we see the universe and everything out here operating together and we are supposed to be the watchers of this realm, that means that we aren't doing a good job. We aren't doing a good job. Now, when you're dealing with robots, you know, the people who are not running around with ill intentions, but they still engage and follow the system. You don't always have to be as hard on these beings because these beings are just, they the sheep, you know. They are the followers. If you change the leader in the head, they're gonna follow that space as well too. You know, I wouldn't say these people are weaker or stronger. That's just the space that they occupy. You know what I mean? And that's me being generous once again, because we're in the middle of a battlefield and I'm still trying to be generous when really, if you are with the ops or you're in the middle, you not with me. Because I don't want to have any close people getting in my bubble and then they're trying to harm me and damage me in the process, you know what I mean? If you can get close enough to me, then that means that you figured out a way to play the middle and you did a really good job with the mask, you know what I mean? You have to experience life to understand these things. You have to, you know, be aware while you're out here walking in this realm, in this way of life out here. I would never tell people to stop being generous, to stop being sympathetic or empathetic to people and beings out here. But what I would tell them to do is be more accurate. Be more accurate. You know what I mean? When I go to certain places and locations and I see certain beings or I feel certain vibrations, sometimes I just... I'm not going to say I match their vibration, but I shield my vibration. I shield my vibration. I don't match their vibration, you know, because most of them spaces want you to be emotionless or they want you to be extremely robotic. And that's not me at any degree or extent, you know, so. And understanding these things is like from a man's standpoint, Men, men may try to make you be in some kind of lesser or beta man position because of these things. The trick with a lot of this is, is right, you have to be able to poke your chest out. You have to be able to stand solid when it's time. You have to be able to do these things when it's time. When you don't stand solid when it's time, then you right. They do put you in the weaker category because now you don't want to address the situation physically and you don't want to address the situation verbally, which means that they literally just get a pass. Now, for some situations, depending on if you constantly engaging with somebody, you may give them a pass or two. You know what I mean? You don't play Monopoly and got the get out of jail free card, but they don't have two, three, four of them. They only got one. You get one get out of jail free card. That's it. So if you was around me and then I gave you, ah, you get out of jail free card and then you still kept trying to play my kindness for weakness, I'm going to show you that that's far from weakness. I will show you that it's far from weakness. A lot of people don't like the fact that the creator got warriors over here. You know, they think that we are just these quiet, shut up, submissive, sit down people. And that's never been my vibration. And I will never be that way ever until the day they take me off of this realm and I'm on to my next journey. That is my it's, I've been programmed. I've walked this way for 38 years. It's not going to shift. You know why? Because I don't want to shift it. That's why it hasn't shifted. Everything that I wanted to change, transition and shift, I did. The things that I did not want to, I stood solid on those. When you have solid starting points, solid values, principles, morals, then, you know, whether you're doing nice gestures or not, you, 
it don't make you seem weak or lesser. You don't know how many of us have to engage with women that take our kindness for weakness to the point to where I don't usually give compliments to females, not as far as physical vessel. I don't, I stopped doing that shit in high school, middle school. You know what I mean? Once I got to high school, I realized, okay, they all got options. It's just what options they want. You know what I mean? They all got thousands of guys telling them, hey, you beautiful. Hey, you're gorgeous. You know, I'm saying these things because I don't I, like, that's just, beauty is, I'm going to be very simplistic. And beauty is in the eye of the beholder. You know what I mean? <laughs> uh, I, to each his own in that space. You know what I mean? But when they they even have sayings in today where they say the nice guy finish last women don't want nice guys you gotta realize that the women that don't want nice guys are usually pretty demonic women <laughs> the women that don't want nice guys are usually demonic women and on the other side of that coin the women that don't want nice guys these men are usually very weak, submissive, or complacent. Meaning that their backbone was literally pulled out like, like a, a, a like a chicken tender or, or a boneless chicken. You know, where you just slide the bone right up out of there and all you got is the meat left. These are the only two ways that that thing is gonna operate. You know what I mean? And it's, it's weird though, right? Because I've had beings put me in that space, but I'm a fighter and I'm a warrior. You know what I mean? Like, I could be walking down the street with my person and then the next minute, like, I'm over here addressing the situation and it's a completely different vibration. Completely different vibration. You know what I mean? Still coming from source. But now I don't had to turn up. I got my chest out. I got my sores out. I got my, my 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 defenses out. You know what I'm saying? I got everything. I got all my alerts on and ready for all the smoke at all times. You know what I mean? It's such a weird place that we actually are entangled in right now. Because one minute is so beautiful, and then the next minute it just feels extremely destructive and disgusting. But even through all my new experiences from all the new witchery, the sorcery, all this intoxicating shit, it's like, it still doesn't make me want to stop caring. It still doesn't make me want to stop loving. It still doesn't make me close off my heart. You know what I mean? It's still a lot of things that whatever they're doing is still not as impactful as my belief system in the source that I follow. You know what I mean? So even when you little, they tell you that don't be a follower, be a leader. Don't be a follower, be a leader. But they're not telling you how to be a leader. And they not even explain the concept that you have to become a great follower in order to become an awesome leader. You have to be a good follower to become a great leader. Like these things go hand in hand together. Most beings that's in a leading position, they had to follow because they didn't know the techniques unless boom they was just like four or five years old thrown out into the woods say you threw like 10 four or five year olds out in the woods you know they'll figure out by who's more uh take charge kind of person who's going to be leading that kind of scenario you don't need like to have this long life experience because you need immediate solutions right now you need immediate structure right now right now but never stop loving, never stop caring, never stop being empathetic, sympathetic, you know, never stop being joyful, cheerful. Everything that makes us us, everything that keeps this, this realm over here green and glowing. If they didn't have us spread out the way they did, then this place would be a lot worse than what it is right now. You know what I mean? We could all be out here. I could not be talking and having these talks with y'all, dropping this knowledge and information in my life and my experiences because I put a lot of my life out here. Like, that's why when I have to deal with certain beings saying certain things to me, it's like, I don't give a fuck. 
I don't see you being brave enough and putting your real life and experiences out here to the world for people to learn and being able to, you know, explain it to the point to where they can use it in their day to day life. I got a lot of knowledge and information in here, but I only speak on subjects that you can implement right now. You know, when I go to a restaurant, I'm not going in a restaurant and be like, damn, let me check out this menu. All right, I'm going to sit here until next week. It's like, no, I went to this restaurant because I want to eat now. I want to eat right now. That's why I came to this restaurant. If I want to eat next week, I'll be back at the restaurant next week. But I'm not at the restaurant next week. I'm here right now because I want to eat right now. So in, in my world, it's like, let me share and implement some things that people could start feeding themselves with now. You know, whether it's the examples that I give or whether it's just my real life experiences. And I don't give a damn if people say or do what they do because it's my walk of life and it's not anything that I could do to change my past or the things that I've experienced or that I've went through to get to this point to where I'm at today. I've been brown my whole life, so y'all got to understand, this never changes. You know, I went from New York to Virginia where people do look at you a little weirder in Virginia because of the way you're born. And it's like, good, cool. You know, that just made me more stronger and more solid because the way I walk my life is the same way. So just being mindful of these things, you know what I mean? But I ain't want to run it up too long. Tapping to everything down below. You know what I mean? Peace and love to the kings and queens.